Okay, so good day to each and every one of you. This will be our second video discussion for the subject uh, banking and financial institutions. So um, for the for for the day for the second video, we will be focusing on module number three, Central Bank of the Philippines, and module number four, banking institutions. So I highly, recommend, I highly recommend that you have your modules with you so that you will be guided throughout this discussion and uh, you can take down notes. Pag meron kayong gustong i-take down the notes. So without further ado, let's begin. The last time or our previous discussion, we talked about the financial system of the Philippines and yung... Uh, Definition of cent of BSP, Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Central Bank, and the different kinds of banking institutions that we have. So now, we will give emphasis on Central Bank of the Philippines, and we we will also give emphasis on the different functions and kinds of banking institutions. So yun yano. No? Nasabi natin before. Uh, that BSP, their main objective is to maintain price stability uh, conducive to a balanced and sustainable growth of the economy and employment. It shall also promote and maintain monetary stability and the convertibility of the peso. So mainly, ang, ano, ang, uh, ang functions ng BSP natin, tulad nga ng Sabi natin dito and tulad doon sa ating naging previous discussion that their main objective is to really uh, stabilize the economy of the Philippines doon sa kanyang monetary uh, policies, doon sa, um, yun nga sa sinasabi dito ang convertibility of the peso or yung kanyang exchange rate uh, and supervising or supervisory function doon sa ating mga banking institutions natin. And we also defined last time that uh, BSP is, has its own regulatory body. Hindi siya controlled by uh, any forms of government. Legislative man yan, executive or judiciary. They are not controlled. Or yun nga, BSP is not controlled by them. They have their own regulatory body and they decide on their own what to do. With, ano, with the financial system of the Philippines. So mainly, para siyang, ano, para siyang, para, para siyang in essence, a government body din siya. Pero it acts on its own. Hindi yun nga, hindi siya controlled by any, ano, anyone from the government. Now, um, well, let's just hope, no? Na yung pinaka-governor or yung, B, yung governor ng BSP natin is not someone who is allied to a particular party or to a, to a particular person so that you know uh, they will not be uh, they will not be functioning uh, on the interest of a certain of a certain individual it is of course really important that BSP will be autonomous in every decision that they will make and will always or should always be uh, for the benefit of the Filipino people of the general public not just to someone specific on the individual. Now we have here the timeline of events or your history natin. Uh, well, me personally, I don't really dwell into much with history. Uh, history of stuff like this, no? Um, since since uh, the history of BSP is easily accessible already here in your modules and also in the internet uh, you can easily uh, look for it no? if you if you really want but I don't really recommend diving into much with history of BSP or with that being said any um, when we talk about theories like this uh, it is important that we know the history but okay lang kahit hindi na pag-aralan ng gusto. Ang mahalaga lang dito ay alam ninyo kung saan nang galing ang BSP. So, 
I won't really dwell into much into these details. You can just uh, read it on the, read it on your own. We will now proceed with the organizational structure of the BSP or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. As I've said, uh, BSP has its own regulatory body. They have their own uh, yeah, they have their own power. Sila yung parang uh, yun nga, uh, hindi siya kaalyado ng government or hindi siya kontrolado ng government. Uh, BSP acts on its own. And with that being said, no, sinasabi natin na napakalaki ng function ng BSP. Uh, nasa kanila nakasalalay ang um, stability ng economy natin. Nasa kanila, nasa kanila nakasalalay ang uh, ang kung anong klase ng uh, ng inflation rate ang gagawin or yun nga yung mga monetary policies natin so meron din siyang of course sarili niyang organizational structure and uh, the, the topmost part of the org chart is the monetary board and when we say monetary board they are the ones who exercise the powers and functions of BSP such as the conduct of monetary policy and supervision of financial system. So mainly, lahat ng functions ng BSP natin, uh, ang nagdeside niyan ay yung monetary board. Kumbaga, since sila yung nasa pinakatuktok ng organizational structure, they are also the ones, uh, you can also compare it to a traditional, com to a traditional company na merong CEO, merong COO, uh, merong kung anong uh, position man yan, di ba? But, the main function or the main responsibility of the monetary board is to decide. They have to decide what kind of monetary policy should be followed and what kind of regulation should be implemented for our financial institution and supervising the financial system itself. So mainly pure, ano sila, purely decision making and supervisory functions ang monetary board natin. And the CEO of this board is what we call the BSP governor. Siya po ang BSP governor natin. It, they, uh, he or she acts as the CEO of a traditional company. Uh, and siya sa BSP governor, siya yung counterpart sa ano natin, sa BSP org chart or yung org structure natin. And if that is the case, no, since sila yung parang pinaka executive officer natin or pinaka leader, they are required to direct and supervise the operations and internal administration. Sila ang nagsusupervise at nagpapatakbo ng uh, ng operations part ng business wherein yun yung pina, parang pinakatrabaho and sila rin yung nagda-direct and supervise dun sa internal administration natin or yung mga tao dun sa monetary board natin. So basically, they are really the leaders or he, the BSP governor is the leader of Banco Central ng of BSP of course. And then next, we have here the executive management services. Um, Basically, yung pinagkaiba lang po na itong dalawa, no? and the, the monetary board and the EMS or the executive management services. Monetary board is focused on decision making, deciding on what kind of monetary policy, what kind of regulation should we implement, and supervisory. While si executive management services naman, siya po yung gumagawa ng actual na trabaho the actual operation itself and we have here different uh, sectors under the EMS or the executive management services uh, i'd like also to compare no yung compare natin yung BSP doon sa isang traditional na company na meron tayo monetary board they are the ones who are focused on decision making pagdating sa traditional company yung mga CEO, yung mga president natin, mga heads ng mga department natin, um, they are the ones who are also um, responsible for decision making. And then, doon tayo sa executive management services ng BSP, 
wherein sabi nga natin sila yung responsible dun sa actual na trabaho ng company natin. Sa isang traditional na company, meron din tayo nito. Dito dumalabas yung mga different departments na meron tayo. Meron tayo nung human resource department, marketing department, uh, finance department, the yung baba yung usual. Uh, the actual yun nga, the actual operations itself, the operation uh, operation unit ng isang business, and everything else. Lahat ng uh, lahat ng mga tao na responsible to do the actual work of the company dito po yun sa executive management services. So, balik tayo kay BSP. Uh, one of their functional sectors is what we call the monetary stability sector. And they take charge of the formulation and <coughs> implementation of BSP's, BSP's monetary policy. So, ang nangyayari dito, monetary board, since they are doing sa decision making natin, they will decide they will decide now what kind of monetary policy should uh, should they implement for ano for our financial institutions or financial systems natin and once they have decide on once they have decided on what kind of monetary policy should they implement the monetary stability sector will now take charge of formulating the monetary policy when we say formulating this will mean finalizing the monetary policy itself um kumaga si yung, yung galing kasi kay monetary board is purely a decision uh, and papasok siya kay monetary stability sector para i-finalize ito with the use of proper documentation and proper research kung paano aayusin yung monetary policy na yon and the implementation of the policy itself. So, siguro gawin na natin example dito is yung uh, yun nga, yung pagtaas ng inflation rate natin ngayon sa ano, pagtaas ng yeah, pagtaas ng inflation rate natin sa Philippines. One of uh, BSP's solution here is to increase the interest rate uh, ng mga borrowers and ng mga lenders natin. So, ano ang ibig sabihin ng pagtaas ng interest rate ng borrowers and lenders and paano ito makaka-apekto sa economy natin? First and foremost, kaya po tumataas ang, infl- ang, ang inflation rate natin kasi tumataas ang demand natin, tumataas ang amount ng mga tao na gustong bumili ng isang bagay pero konti lang ang supply na meron tayo. So that means kaya doon kaya tumataas ang mga presyo ng mga bilihin natin. Now, uh, one of the ways that BSP would like to take in order to control the increase of inflation rate is to increase the interest rate of borrowers and lenders natin. So ano ang ibig sabihin nito? sa ano sa mga sa atin sa mga tao no pag kayo ay nag-loan sa isang bangko mataas ang interest rate na babayaran ninyo pag kayo ay nag-deposit ng pera sa bangko mataas din ang interest rate na makukuha ninyo this means that BSP would like to encourage people to save up money saving up money instead of borrowing instead of loaning or loan no uh, they want to encourage people to uh, to lessen their 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 expenses babawasan ngayon ng mga tao yung lumalabas na pera sa kanila para meron silang maipasok na pera doon sa ating mga banking institutions na in turn will give out higher interest rate for the lenders at pag na lesson or, or na encourage ngayon ng mga tao na uh, bawasan ngayon yung expenses nila at mag-save up na lang ng pera ang nangyayari humihina yung spending power ng mga Pilipino kaya ngayon as much as possible nagiging equal kasi nga di ba sabi natin sa na mataas yung demand konti lang ang supply natin and in order to do so, kailangan mabawasan ang spending capacity 
ng mga tao para maging equal ulit yung demand tsaka ng supply. Kasi pag bumaba ang spending capacity ng mga tao, konti lang ngayon ang mga bibili, konti lang ang mababawasan sa supply natin at sana as much as possible ay mas mag-equalize na ang demand at supply natin. Since that is our ultimate goal, mas maganda or pinakamaganda talaga na ma-achieve ng isang bansa na equal ang supply at equal ang demand. Now, yun. Yun na naman na example na gusto ko ibigay sa inyo. Next, let's go with uh, supervision and examination sector. Uh, they enforce and monitor compliance to banking laws to promote a sound and healthy banking system. Again, one of the functions of BSP is to supervise the financial system. To supervise the financial system and the supervision and examination sector of BSP, sila po yung in charge to, nga, to enforce and monitor this. Basically, sila yung sort of like nagiging police para sa mga banko, para sa mga banking institutions na meron tayo. Para healthy pa rin at maayos tumatakbo ang ating financial system. Next, we have the resource management sector uh, serves the human, financial, and physical needs of BSP. Basically, uh, the, the resource management sector, sila yung mga nagbibigay ng resources dun sa mga sectors na pinangangailangan ng tao, ng financial needs, or ng physical resource. Basically, yun nga, sila po yung nagbibigay ng resources sa mga different sectors na meron tayo. Mapa, uh, mapa empleyado man yan or human resource. Mapa financial resource man yan or ito yung, yun nga, pera. Or physical resource. Uh, like say for example, machines, uh, tools and equipments or uh, other industrial sites, buildings, ganyan. Or uh, places, yun, name it. Resource management sector, sila yung nagbibigay ng mga resources doon sa pangangailangan ng BSP natin. And under the resource management sector, we have the security plan complex. They are responsible for the production of Philippine currency, security documents, and commemorative medals and medallion. Ito yung siguro pinakasikat na function ng, ano, ng BSP natin. Yung pag, 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 paggawa ng pera, no? pag, ano, pag, pag treat ng mga pera natin, production of Philippine currency. So, yun. I think that's it for uh, for this module. And very straightforward na naman siya at madali. Again, history, you can uh, read it on your own. Pero, uh, I will, I, 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 I will, I would like to give uh, emphasis here on the structure or of the org structure of BSP. Now, let's move forward with the banking institutions. Um, yun yan. We already defined the different kinds of banking institutions during our previous discussion. Pero let's just give a little more emphasis on uh, the banking institutions of the Philippines again. History of Philippine banking, you guys can read it on your own. I don't really uh, plan to dwell too much on the history. Let's now go with Sige, start tayo sa perspective on bank or banking. Before we proceed with the different banking institutions that we have, no? Yung nga, na-discuss na natin kanina yung BSP o yung Central Bank natin, Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Now, we're going to discuss the different banking institutions that we have in the Philippines. Uh, pero first, let's put into perspective ano nga ba ang tingin ng ibang tao pagdating sa term na bank or and or banking. According to a professor, according to Professor Chamber, I don't really know who Professor Chamber is. But according to him, a uh, bank is an office or institution for keeping, lending, and exchange, ex exchange of money 
while banking is the process of performing the activities of the bank. Bank is an office or institution for keeping, lending, and exchanging of money, while banking is the process of performing the activities of the bank. Basically, yun yan, no? our financial system, we have the lenders, we have the banking institutions, and we have the uh, the, the borrowers. Ganun din ang purpose ng bank natin. They are, of course, since they are the middlemen or sila yung banking institutions natin, they are the ones responsible for keeping the money that was saved up by the lenders, lending money to borrowers, loan, whether in the form of different kinds of loan, and exchange of money, whether in the form of different currencies, or money changing etc and banking is the act or the process of performing the activities of the bank and the bank shall refer to entities to entities engaged in the lending of funds obtained in the form of deposits um, nature of banking business i i i i i sorry for that. I, I, I wish I was enough. I, I, I gave enough understanding on this perspective on bank and, and banking. Basically, yun nga no, um, since bank, banks are the middlemen of our financial system, they are, of course, the one responsible for keeping the money that was lent by the lenders, um, lending out the money that was deposited to the borrowers, and exchange of money whether in the form of different kinds of currency and or um, any other forms of exchange of money and the banking is the act of doing so the process of performing the activities of the bank now let's go to the nature of banking business we have here a quotation uh, we have here a quote that says a bank makes money out of other people's money Totoo po to. Uh, kaya po kumikita ang mga banko dahil din po sa pera na pinapasok ng ibang mga tao. Example, Mr. A borrows money at the bank and the bank approves his application for the loan. Ibig sabihin, si Mr. A dito ay isang borrower. Siya po ay mangutang sa banko natin. Mr. A could either get the proceed um, in cash or simply request the bank to open a current account under his name. If Mr. A asked the bank to open a current account under this name, the entry would be loans and discount 100,000 uh, 100, pesos and demand deposits 100,000 uh, pesos. So dahil nga si borrower natin ay mawangutang ng pera, they have to of course uh, pay up interest rate. And doon nga sa interest rate natin, doon kumikita ang mga banko natin. So, a bank makes money out of other people's money. Now, let's go to the principles of banking business. We have here the partial reserve system, uh, which is... Paano ko ba explain ito? Partial reserve system. Ibig sabihin lang nito, hindi lahat ng dinereposit ng isang tao ay available na ipamigay ng banko. So, paano ko ba explain na mga kasi gagawin ito? For example, our class, the whole section of uh, BSFM 2.1 or BSFM 2.2 and 2.3, we decide to save up money. Lahat tayo, no? Collectively, we decide to save up money to end deposit it on a certain bank. Let's say, for example, the bank now is St. Jude. St. Jude Bank. Naisip natin na mag-deposit ng pera sa St. Jude Bank. And, di ba sa financial system natin, kung ano yung pera na tinago natin doon sa mga banking institutions, yun din yung pera na ipapautang ng mga banko doon sa mga borrowers natin. Di ba? That's how we discussed uh, the financial system of the Philippines before, yung pera na pinasok ng lenders natin, ng savers 
yun din yung pera na ibibigay ng mga banko doon sa mga borrowers natin. Now, the principles of banking business, we have here the partial reserve system. Ibig sabihin lang po nito, hindi lahat ng pinasok na pera ng mga savers doon sa banking institution natin ay available para ipahiram doon sa mga borrowers natin. Yung mga banko, nag-save sila ng certain amount doon sa deposit natin. Like say for example, tayo, dito sabi nga natin no, sa FM21 or FM22 and 23, uh, we, decided, uh, we decided to save up, let's say for example, 100,000 pesos in SJC Bank. Ngayon, si SJC Bank, hindi lahat ng 100,000 pesos na meron siyang pera ay available for lending. Hindi lahat, hindi yung kabuang 100,000 pesos na yon yung pwede ipautang ng mga banko natin dun sa mga borrowers. They have to save up as well. And this is what we call bank reserves. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin na bank reserves. Ito yung amount ng pera na sinesave up ng mga banko natin. And bakit nila ginagawa to? Bakit, nila, bakit sila nagsisave up ng pera? Ibig sabihin ba noon, kinokorrupt nila yung pera? Is it, is it corruption of some sorts? Hindi po. Uh, yung deposit natin na pera, kung magka naman yun, yun yung pera natin sa banko. Pero, ang sinasabi lang dito sa partial reserve system is hindi lahat ng dinadeposit natin na pera ay pwede mapunta sa mga borrowers natin. Tandaan, meron tayong financial system. Tama ba? Na ating mga lenders magpapasila ang papasok ng pera doon sa banking institutions and yung banking institutions ay kukuha ng pera doon sa dineposit ng mga lenders para ipahiram doon sa mga borrowers natin. Tayo po mga lenders, hindi tayo apektado dito. Kung magkano man ang pinasok natin na pera, kung magkano ang dineposit natin, makukuha natin yon. This, that is our cash. Ang sinasabi lang natin dito is hindi lahat ng deposit ng mga tao doon sa banko yun ay pwedeng ipahiram ng banko para sa mga borrowers. They have to also um, reserve a portion of the deposited amount and, co- and we call it the bank reserves. Kaya ginagawa ito ng mga banko kasi imagine if all of the amount All of the deposited money of the bank will uh, will be uh, will be uh, borrowed, no? Or mahihiram ng mga borrowers natin. Paano ngayon mag-iikot na maayos yung pera without, you know, parang it, it's like you took a risk of ano of sige, pahiram na yan lahat. Sure naman tayo na may babalik. Eh. You took that kind of risk with money, no, and and you don't have a plan B for your, I know, for your, for for the bank and for the economy itself. Kaya importante yung bank reserves tayo para in case of emergency we have pinya mga mga reserves natin. And aside from reserves, uh, this will also help then kasi with regulation of the economy natin, kasi. Ayun nga, no? kung, 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 kung lahat na lang ng pera na nasa loob ng mga banko ay available for ano, available for loans, edi lahat na lang tayo mag-loan ng pera, di ba? Uh, maka sure naman na makakuha tayo ng pera since yun nga, lahat ng pera sa banko pwede natin utangin eh. Lahat na lang tayo ay mag-loan na mag-loan hanggang sa maubos yung pera natin. So, it will really um, it will really bring chaos with the financial system. Uh, since, ayun nga, no, not all borrowers din kasi have the capacity to pay enough. And, it is really important that you have a reserve under your, ano, under, under, under your uh, institution. So, yun. Types of banks. We have here um, different categories of the types of banks. If we will talk about ownership, uh, 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 if we will talk about ownership, we have two types of banks. We have privately owned and publicly owned, or what we call government owned. 
if we will uh, talk about the place of incorporation kung saan man ito naka uh, nag, nag originate we have domestic and we have foreign so kung pag domestic of course it's a bank that was generated here in our country pag foreign bank naman yan it's a bank that came from other countries um, yeah basically that's it does the structure itself stock corporation and non-stock corporation um, when we say stock corporation they are usually allied with or they're usually connected with the uh, yeah, with, the, with the stock exchange committee and pag non-stock corporation naman mainly focused on banking institutions as to the function and line of development ito yung mga pinag-usapan natin before na types of banks according to the function according to their responsibilities we talk about commercial banks sabi natin dito they are the ones who are focused on the deposits of ng pera natin and give short term loans so mainly ito yung mga savings natin mga saving banks natin we have here different kinds of commercial bank we have the uh, trust company and savings or thrift banks sorry excuse me uh, when we say uh, the trust company mainly uh, para silang ano, para silang nasa customer service na industry more on giving out a service for the clients for the clients no? uh, like say for example in administ uh, administrative or estates doon sa mga uh, mga properties guardian and guardian of minor interests executor of last will and testaments mainly the trust company or or are uh, trust companies sila yung nagbibigay ng serbisyo para dun sa mga clients natin according to their needs while uh, savings naman or thrift banks based on the term itself they are focused on savings of money safekeeping and nakalagay dyan next we have the rural banks uh, primarily organized to cater to the needs of small farmers so ito sabi natin more on agricultural uh, ang approach ng rural banks development banks are primarily focused on giving loans to be used for developing the economy and may therefore engage in medium and long-term lending. The mainly function of development bank is to give out loans for the for the development of the company or for for the development of the economy. So, yun. They are the ones who are responsible to give out loans and dapat yung loans na ipapamigay nila should be used for for the development of our economy. Next, we have here the cooperative bank. Ito yung mga co-op, co-op na sinasabi natin. Pero cooperative bank is more um, more specific and more inclined with bigger organizations or associations. So mainly, ang ibig sabihin po ng cooperative bank is uh, to give out or to offer their services to cooperative associations mainly kung ano lang din naman kasi yung function ng commercial banks ng rural banks ng development banks ng trust companies or ng savings or thrift banks these are also offered by cooperative banks pero uh, it is for the advantage of the cooperative associations that are connected with the cooperative bank so, so para silang exclusive na banko para sa mga associations or group of companies na <coughs> ayun nga that will uh, that will work really entirely for the for the purpose of for the advantage of the cooperative associations that are connected with them next we have the investment banks from the term itself they are the ones who are responsible to give out investments uh, whether in the form of stocks and bonds and then lastly here i'm not sure what this really is baka mamaya meron ng typographical error dito pero let's disregard this one na muna letter f kasi uh, 
me myself, no, I'm not really sure what this is. Bank is a very general term. And to call it banks of all banks, what I mean, what gives? No? What is the reason why call banks of all banks atom term ito. So next, we have again different kinds of banks according to management. <clears throat> we have the unit bank here, which is based on a term itself. Refers to a bank that is a single, usually small bank that provides financial services to its local community. It is owned primarily by a single, small-time owner, or uh, yun nga, small scale lang. Then ang kaya niyang iprovide na na, na services. Next, we have here the group banks owned by two or more banks, and then we have the uh, branch bank. They re it refers to a bank that is connected to one or more other banks in an area of or outside of it. Bisabihin ng ng branch bank, it's a different branch of a specific bank. Next, we have chain banking. is a group of banks held together by a group of individuals for effective banking activities. Uh, chain of banks, pinagkaiba niya sa branch bank. Branch bank kasi, it's in essence, also a chain bank, no? since uh, magkakadutong-dutong yung lahat. Pero when we say chain banking, uh, different brands or different kinds of banks no? will work together as one. Uh, and usually, nga, yun nga, held together by a group of individuals. So, doon kasi sa branch bank na sinasabi natin, dito yung parang, sinasa dito yung parang franchising na nagaganap. Uh, meron tayong, for example, BPI sa iba't ibang areas ng Pilipinas. Pero, when we say chain banking naman, it's two or more different groups that are grouped together or joined together and are managed by a group of individuals. So, dito ba sa Philippines? Hindi ko kasi alam kung ano yung mga pwede nating example ng chain banking sa Philippines natin. Let's look. Uh, kung meron tayong makikita. Chain Banking Philippines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no... Uh, I, cannot, I cannot see any examples of Chain Banking here in the Philippines. Pero, yun nga, no? tulad na dito na, nakalagay sa definition na to. Chain banking is a form of bank governance that occurs when a small group of people control at least three independently chartered banks. Ibig sabihin nga na to, uh, chain banking, different uh, brands no? or different, um, different banks that are managed together by a group of individuals. Next that we will talk about is we have the economic significance of banks. Banks play an important role in the economy for offering a service for people wishing to save. And aside from saving, banks also play an important role in offering finance to businesses who wish to invest and expand. These loans and business investment are important for enabling economic growth. Basically, what we have discussed before no? the financial system of the Philippines. Meron tayong borrowers, meron tayong banking institutions, and meron tayong lenders. Main purpose of the banks, based from our previous talks pa rin, keep money safe for customers. Since one of their roles is to accept money from the lenders, we have to keep their money safe. First and foremost, Offer customers interest on deposits, helping to protect against money losing value against uh, inflation. So, yung nga, sila nga yung mga nagpap... Sila yung... Well, si BSP ang nagpapatupad ng interest rate natin. Pero, nakakay, nakasalay pa rin yan sa banking institutions natin or sa mga banks. Kung paano nila i-implement yung regulation or yung monetary policy na pinapa-implement ng BSP. Lending money to firms, customers, and home buyers. Uh, yun nga, pagbigay ng pera sa ating mga borrowers. Offering financial advice and related financial services such as 
insurance. So yun po yung main purpose ng mga banks natin sa Philippines. And I hope that you have gained something from this video kahit sobrang konti man din. Uh, again, we have here the history. It's all up to you if you want to um, dive into deeper the history of Philippine banking. Pero for me, we should focus on the more important stuff such as the theories that we have discussed or, or the definition of terms that we have discussed for today. So I hope you gained something from this video. Thank you so much for listening and stay safe. Bye-bye.